will take all the families of the north. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and will bring them against this land and will utterly destroy it. This is the word of the Lord. No. No. Not the temple of God! On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the commander of the imperial guard came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army broke down the walls around Jerusalem and carried into exile people who remained in the city. Peace be with you, Master. Peace be with you, Elisha. Elisha, Jemariah, you will deliver the message. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Babylon? You will take it there with haste. Find the elders, priests, and prophets living in exile there. The road to Babylon has many dangers even within the camp of Israel. Those pretending to be prophets spread lies among our people. I pray God will guide you safely there. Babylon. I've never seen such a place. The riches of this place. Yet our people dwell in tents on its outskirts.
What business do you have here? I'm looking for the elders, priests, and prophets of Israel. I bring word from the Lord to this people. The Lord speaks to us. Why should we believe you? I am God's prophet. Why have you come? I bring word from the Lord by the hand of the prophet Jeremiah. Assemble the people, all of them. Assemble the people. Assemble the people. What the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those carried away captives whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. This cannot be the word of God. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in numbers there, do not decrease. And seek for the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for the city, for if it prospers, you too will prosper. Pray for Babylon, for the Gentiles that burn the temple of our God. Do not listen to this. Why? This Please. is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, said. Do not let the prophets and deceivers among you deceive you. They prophesy lies to you. In my name, I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you will seek me with all of your heart. The reading of the words of the Lord by the hand of Jeremiah began to transform our people. We began to build and plant and to eat from our own gardens. There was the song of marriage in our camp once again, and our numbers began to increase. We began making peace with our captors. We need hay for our horses. And even prayed for the city of Babylon 
we began to prosper just as they too prospered. And when the time was fulfilled, we returned back to Jerusalem. We returned in great numbers, with great increase, and with hope and a future. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. One thing I've found is that God has a way of providing for our needs so that we can have hope in a future, even if we have to start completely over with nothing. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, The plans I have for you, declares the Lord, are not to harm you, but give you hope in a future. God gave us a simple design to follow so that we can live in His economy, whether our circumstances are good or bad. First, we're to build homes and settle down. I think this means to accept our circumstances and to start with a place to live. It's a base where we can live and begin to build and improve our lives. Second, we're to plant gardens and eat from our own gardens. This means to have a source of income that we can take care of our own needs and be prepared to serve others. I know it sounds so basic, but often we overlook these simple steps in God's plan to take care of us. Next, God said to marry and have sons and daughters. In God's economy, men and women are of equal value. It's important to note that their circumstances were not a cause to stop being fruitful or multiplying. When these steps are in place, we should pray for our leaders in our work, in our community, and in our nation, even if they're non-believers. We should pray for and seek the prosperity of our community. This principle is what I call the principle of reciprocal prosperity. Because God said, if we help others prosper, we too will prosper. You know, Daniel is a great example of a Jewish captive who followed God's plan while he was in Babylon. If we listen to the advice of men who are not following Christ, false prophets will deceive us. So be very careful that you're not living by the forces and principles that control man's economy. God's message is both practical and simple. By following the design of His economy, we can have hope in any circumstance. You know, it's extremely important to put what you're learning into practice. One practical application that I want you to consider is organizing a prayer walk around your neighborhood or community. Read about it in your companion guide and encourage others to participate with you. Begin to pray for the peace and prosperity of your very own community. Follow God's design and live in His economy. You too will experience His deliverance. I am the prophet of God. You can learn about this true story in Jeremiah 29, verse 1 through 14. What did you learn from this true story? How can you apply this story to your life? Let me tell you some of the things that I have learned from this experience, what God has taught me. 
God sent his people into captivity in Babylon. They had nothing. They were refugees. To survive, they had to start over completely without anything. In fact, God sent them specific instructions. His plan of how to start over to ensure that they would have a hope and a future. First, God told them to build houses and to settle down. God wants each of us to have a place to live and to be settled so we will have a foundation from which we can help others. God also told them to plant gardens and to eat what they produce or to eat from their own gardens. Having a source of income or a way to eat and survive without being dependent on others to provide for you is very important. By establishing your own source of food or income, you can be in a position to serve others, not take from them. God's plan was for his followers to marry and have children. The Bible tells us we are to have one wife and that children are a reward from God, not a curse. God so believes in marriage that he told those in captivity to find spouses for their sons and daughters and to be sure and increase, not to decrease. The Lord told them this very important truth that after they had done all these other things, they were to pray for their city and to seek its peace and prosperity. For their very own prosperity was dependent upon the prosperity of their city. God uses our efforts to create a peaceful community where everyone is benefiting. We are not to use force, violence, oppression, slavery or injustice to gain prosperity. We are also not to seek prosperity for ourselves only, but for all those in our community. If we each prosper, then the community will be healthy for all the people living there. Finally, the Lord told his people not to listen to false prophets and deceivers that lived among them. This was important to remember, especially when their future seemed so dark. But after giving these clear instructions that they were to follow, the Lord declared to them that his plans were to prosper, not to harm them, to give them hope and a future. And just as promised, the Lord removed them from captivity after 70 years, and they returned to Jerusalem. They were not harmed, and they had prospered. Can you too follow God's plan? Can you start with nothing and prosper by following the step-by-step -step plans he gave to the slaves of Babylon? Think through each of these steps carefully. Be sure you are following each one. God wants to give you hope and a future, but you must do your part and God will do his part. There is so much more God wants to teach us. Our next story will continue your journey. I have the privilege of introducing you to the truths that will equip you to make the most important decision of your entire life. First, God loves you and wants you to know Him. The verse that most clearly expresses this is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God wants to have a personal and close relationship with each of us. Unfortunately, we're separated from Him by our sin. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Each of us has sinned, and this has created a gap between us and God that cannot be bridged by our own efforts. But there is good news, the gospel, Jesus Christ is God's provision to bridge the gap. He died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. Romans 5.8 tells us, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in John 14.6, Jesus told us that He was the only bridge when He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. This relationship 
is a gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. We only have to confess and turn away from our sins and ask Jesus Christ into our life to be our Savior and Lord. Now, if you're not certain you have this relationship, I encourage you to turn to Christ right now. I invite you to bow your head and close your eyes. Please pray silently in your heart or out loud with me if you prefer. Father God, I need you. I confess my sins and turn away from them. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life as Savior and Lord and make me the person you want me to be. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me the gift of eternal life. Amen. I want to encourage you if you prayed this prayer. Jesus Christ is in your life, and I want you to get to know Him well.